Everybody, it's Pete Carmasino here at Chaken Analytics. I'm your chief market strategist, and this is the halftime show here on Stock Charts TV. So, what we do here is kind of go over the markets from a perspective of looking at the ACP platform, but we're also looking at a macro view, right? Trying to look at indexes, diving down into those indexes, see if there's any particular names that are changing trend. We use our power gauge here. That's a 20 factor model created by Mark Jake and our founder. And really what it encompasses is a lot of fundamental characteristics. So I'll look at that a little bit today, but I do want to look at sort of what's going on in the markets. Look, we've been overbought, right? That's being after, you know, after having a big sell-off here in the beginning of the year where people were just kind of deferring uh, capital gains until, you know, the next year, 2025. So that happens. So that was really short-lived. Now earnings are coming out. And what are we seeing? We're seeing some big names, some tech names sell off. Tonight, we've got Amazon and Meta. These are, you know, these are big names. I don't expect, you know, material changes in outlook. However, earnings, you know, you just don't know what's going to be said on the conference call. Now, the momentum is certainly there. And what's interesting is we had the Fed come out yesterday, say, uh, you know, they're going to be you know, keeping rates the same. But that just means their rates are going to stay higher for longer, which does impact consumer behavior and so on down the line. However, the markets have a different view of this. When I say that is, sometimes the markets just don't wait around. You start to see hiring slow down, like we saw today. January numbers were a little lighter. People start to anticipate the unemployment rate. And when the unemployment rate starts to rise, the Fed typically, actually, it's never not cut when unemployment was on the rise. Now, yesterday, we just heard that it's stable and everything's good. Now, today, we're seeing some different things. We got non-farm out tomorrow. But I'm just going to show you the indicator that I talk about all the time. I, I wrote this up last year. I'll show you the article. We'll go over the chart on uh, the St. Louis Federal Reserve site, also known as FRED. Uh, we'll take a look at that. We'll, I'll look at that site. And then we're going to look at financials. We've got a big bank sell-off going on. Um, and there was some clue from Goldman Sachs here uh, not too long ago, in the middle of January, talking about hedge funds being net sellers. So let's dive into sort of the bullish percent. We're going to look at the markets from a macro level first, then we'll dive down into bonds. We'll look at some of the top ETF uh, sectors and subsectors right now. And then we'll just look at some of the big cap, you know, the mega cap names and maybe one or two names here that might be setting up. All right, folks, we're going to start here with the uh, S&P 500 bullish percent index, right? So you can see the symbols here. It's dollar sign BPSX, SPX, sorry, BPSPX right? Uh, it's up here as well. So if you want to pull this up on the ACP platform, kind of draw some of the lines that I did. I drew these lines here because look, 30 is typically oversold, 70 is typically overbought, certainly migrates above and below those levels. And you know, then we start using RSIs to find areas of being sort of divergence like we saw here in this signal back in late October. What happened there? The Fed paused again and then talked about you know no further hikes, kind of hinted toward it and so on and so forth, right? A lot of this is Fed speak, folks. You got to learn that language and you got to kind of follow it, um, not to the T, but you got to make some anticipation trades as well, just like the market's doing. So what's happening here? We're overbought. I mean, let's look, there's no two ways about it, right? We got overbought now on the RSI, right? Now, this is interesting, right? So I've got an oversold, overbought indicator and I'm putting an overbought, oversold indicator on that indicator, right? So the RSI is looking at this. And when it gets above and starts to move higher and gets a little, you know, overbought here on the RSI, you can anticipate this. It doesn't, it's not like it doesn't happen all the time, right? It just literally happens every single time. The ma magnitude of the move and those kind of things, that's where it starts to get hard to kind of anticipate what's going to happen. However, when you see these trends, you kind of understand that, are we really breaking down? Are we getting into this point where we're going to you know, look, look like a 2022 trade. Look here in 2022, this continued lower, right? Lower highs, right? Lower lows, finally a capitulation there and started to move higher. So this isn't a trading thing. It's more of a sentiment kind of indicator. And it keeps me on the right track, kind of understanding what I can expect markets to do. That's the SPX. Now, let me move over to NASDAQ here and DX, same setup, dollar sign BP and X. And you see a different setup here, right? Still overbought, um, moved lower, was extremely overbought, almost 90, maybe over 90. And your RSI is kind of like 
mitigating here a little bit sideways above and below 50. Nothing really saying something's happening on the downside. Now, look, we got big names coming out. Things can change. But what I'm saying to you is that could it pull back more? Absolutely. And I think that would be an opportunity to allocate more funds toward this tech-heavy index, at least for now. Now, especially because what's going on here, what we talked about in the beginning about the Fed and what they're thinking about doing with rates. So I'm going to just scroll all the way down to uh, my TLT chart. I believe it's this one. I got two in there. There we go. It's not the one. I got to go to the second one. There it is, target. So I, you know, I have this set up as a weekly chart. I'm just going to move that to daily. Okay. I drew these sort of long-term trend lines. Right? It, it doesn't, I hope it doesn't look too messy, but you get the idea, right? It's, one of these is sort of a channel that's widening on the downside. And then the other ones were kind of more narrow and more perpendicular uh, to one another here. But what happened is this hit my target of that 75 to 80 we were talking about and bounced, right? Now it bounced off the trend line. Trend line was resistance, bounced, pulled back, kind of, it's really adhering to these trend lines. Pretty interesting. I think it's amazing, to be honest. Um, but I think if it can get above this $100 level, which we told, you know, I mentioned this many times, this was going to be resistance and it absolutely was. So we know that when bonds fall, rates are rising. And so from what time frame here? The end of December into uh, like maybe last week, right? The 23rd, 26th, whatever the case may be, right? We're February 1st here today. And look at this rally in, these, in this TLT of 2%. That's a big move, right? I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. That's a pretty big, that's a gap, gap higher. Now, I think we can push 100 and probably get up to higher levels. This would be a stretch. It's going to take some time to get there. I don't think that's going to happen overnight. But my point is, is that bonds are potentially acting as a flight to safety. And what's happening when bonds rally, rates go down. The Fed just said they're not cutting. But what did we get? We got some news today about January jobs not growing and people not being hired as much as they were. Right. So hiring was the lowest. According, I'm looking at CNBC's headlines here. Uh, hiring was the lowest for the month on record as layoffs surged, right? And, you know, I guess what they meant there was, you know, jobs uh, came in lighter than expected. Now the market rallied on that. Why? Well, because that's probably signaling a rate cut from the Fed, okay? We'll look at XLF here. I mean, I told you um, financials are being sold off. This has always been a tough trade, but, you know, recently it's moved higher. There's no doubt that they have a lot of exposure to fixed income in their own uh, portfolios. A lot of the names inside here, especially banks and insurance companies. And so when bonds are rallying, as I just showed you on the previous chart, you know, obviously the value of their portfolio is going to increase too. So that's a book value trade. Now, the business end of this equation may not be, right? You start to get unemployment rising, there's going to be less lending and things of that nature. So a little bit too complicated for this video. However, just understand that's kind of the way the markets are viewing these things. And so if I look into um, one name here, I'm looking for the regional bank index, KRE. Look at this, down 4% again today. It was down yesterday as well. Now, this changed trend. We knew we had a banking crisis last year. You remember, uh, right around March or so last year, we had this. Now, look what happened. We got up to these levels of 53. If I change this from a line, I'm just going to do this real quick to a candlestick chart, right? Look where we kind of reached at the high. That was the low area of 2022. And we got back to that level and really couldn't crack it and then made lower highs and started to roll over. Thanks, New York Community Bank. Um, you know, you had some people talking about this spreading into, I don't know, I don't want to say a banking crisis again, but people are trying to quell and sort of mitigate that narrative. The problem is the markets aren't going to sit around and wait, right? So the market's going to react very much like the bond market's not waiting for the Fed to cut rates. They're buying bonds and pushing rates lower, which is having that seesaw effect back again here on the markets because you're getting the push and pull from bonds and interest rates, which affects technology. So, you know, a lot of things happening at once, but let's go to that chart I said I was going to look at, right? I was going to look at this chart. Okay. So check this out. Uh, Fred.stlouisfed.org. You can go make this chart yourself. And all I have here is the unemployment rate in blue and the Fed funds 
effective rate in red. Okay. What's happening? I'll go back. This goes back to 19, I think that says 1955, right? Yes, it does. So unemployment spikes here, you see a recession, rates get cut. Unemployment spikes here, rates get cut. Unemployment spikes here, this is what, 1970, rates get cut. Unemployment spikes here, rate, do you see the pattern? And it's not happened yet, right? So we don't see unemployment spiking and I'm not you know, hoping or praying or anything like for that. What I'm saying is you've got to be pre- prepared for it because if and when it starts to happen, you're going to see bonds rally, rates come down and potentially stocks start to move. Don't forget, sometimes the initial move in the equity markets are down and then they move higher because of the sort of the prospect of a slowdown in the economy that changes things overnight, sort of, so to speak, for stocks. However, people aren't overnight traders in this market, right? Some are, but a lot of people are looking on the long term. Now, I called this out, right? 70 years of this indicator. I wrote this back in September 22nd of 2023. I was early on this because I was talking about this over the summer of 23 as well on these videos. But what I'm saying to you is, is um, there's one of the videos I did in the past that said, paying attention to the unemployment rate. And that's what's happening. And that's why I'm calling that out, right? What also happened is on the financial sector, there was a uh, Reuters headline here. It said hedge fund flow, uh, hedge fund shorts on banks and financials reach a four month peak. Goldman's prime broker desk said, this is coming out of London, January 15th. The note came out on January 12th, however, with for Goldman, which I believe was a Friday. However, you start to look at what's going on here in bonds and things of that nature, you can see that people are, you know, basically, I don't know if it's a flight to safety trade because they're starting to worry about a slowdown, but that's kind of the way the machine works, right? People typically buy bonds to, because they're paying good rates. As they buy more bonds, rates go down so they become less attractive as they're moving out of stocks or selling stocks. So there's that rotation and at some point, the equilibrium starts to say, or the balance starts to get imbalanced, oh, more bonds in the portfolio than stocks. And you go out and start to allocate more money towards stocks. So we might be in that bit of a period right now. It's just something we have to pay attention to. All right. I said I'd look at um, you know, what's going on here in uh, the indexes, but I also said I would look at the power gauge. So let's just take a look at on Amazon, right? You got Amazon numbers coming out today. Stocks rallying, you know, up almost 2% today. Here's our bullish rating on the name. Financials are the weakest, but these three categories look strong. And I said, we're a 20-factor model, right? So all we do is we take weights, uh, we add them up and rate and rank them and create the rating from all of these 20 factors, right? A small portion of them, I would say, you know, a smaller percentage, um, then maybe 10 or 15% of, the, of this rating is a technical rating. But we rely on the external indicators more than we do on the internal technical indicators. We want to be in bullish names. You always want to be in a stock that's a strong stock and a strong group. But looking at what's happening here, you're seeing these sell-offs in the big name. So here's Amazon with a breakout back here. Who knows, you know, at $100 this year in April, the stock's at 160 up 60% less than a year. It's pretty amazing. However, look at the relative strength. Even if we get that pullback, like we did here in October, that was an opportunity here. Okay, so that's what I I like to pay attention to. We'll look at Meta as well. Up $6. Obviously, we're bullish on the name. You can see it's been an incredible run here. This is, look, overbought, over a trillion dollar market cap. But look at that relative strength, folks. Every time it's sold off here before earnings, there were opportunities here. I'm not saying it's a good trade here right now because I don't want to trade. I hate trading before earnings. You just don't know. Just it, just be patient if you don't already own the name. And look at you know levels of like 350 as support. But if I look at that index that's really tech heavy, close that up top here. You know what am I seeing? A great trend again. The same overall index with that sell off in October with no breakdown here in the relative strength was an opportunity. So we're going to pay attention. We might see a breakdown here. I don't know. Maybe we go back to 400 on the Qs. Might be a great opportunity as long as everything else stays intact. On the SPY, which is that S&P 500 ETF, same deal, right? A little bit less here, but don't forget, I'm comparing the Qs here. Let me go back to SPY. That's what we do here. Now, SPY can't be compared to itself. It would be zeroed out. 
So we use IWV, the Russell 3000. In this case, the s and you know, squeaking out a little bit better move. So it's not that, you know, you know, fun to kind of compare it, uh, S&P the, uh, to the Russell. They're very similar. But if I look at, say, semiconductors, you know, one of the, you know, one of the most, you know, focused on sectors out there, um, rightfully so with AI. Another indicator, right? Very strong relative strength. We're bullish on the, on the fund and obviously its components. And, you know, maybe we get a pullback to that 177 to 180 level. Be a great opportunity. Really would be a great opportunity, I think, as long as everything stays intact. Now, things start to change. Fed makes changes. You know, that's another story for another day. But right now, I think things are looking good. Looking at junk bonds, which are your high yield corporate bonds, again, not favorable really to compare this to SPY, but looking at nice trends following the markets as well. Looking at transports, again, a lot of topsy turviness here. You want to see rates, they would probably help them. Uh, however, I got negative relative strength on the actual index itself, even though this trend is strong. It's been choppy at best, really, for the entire year. Names like real estate, another area that's really kind of been back and forth, choppy, got a little bit positive here, but has since rolled over. And obviously, we're talking about KRE. Let's look at our chart here on that banking index where we saw hedge funds, you know, maybe taking some shorts. Um, you know, right around this level here is where they were shorting. Bounced, probably hurt them, maybe had the cover. I don't know. If they continued that short, it would have been great. But you, names like NYC, let's see, NYCB, New York Community Bank, right? Fundamentally, right, things look good. We've got not bad indicators here, except for the one indicator that we really pay attention to, which is price. That broke down back here, right? This broke down in October at $10. There was really no reason it would have never made it on any of my screens ever because I would have never looked for anything unless I was looking for something to short. I would have never looked for anything to purchase that has a negative relative strength. So pay attention to that. I think that'll help you out. All right, folks. Pete Carmesino here at Jake and Analytics. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back again next week with the Jake and Halftime Show here on Stock Charts TV. We'll see you next time. Take care.